All right. So, am I audible and visible to all of you? So, we were talking about the test. I think there was some, uh, I don't know, uh, I don't really understand what went wrong. But on the left hand side, you see something which is called as the Thomas test, which is, you know, we use in flexion deformity of the hip. On the right hand side, you see something which is called as the IT band contracture. So technically, it is the Uber test, not Uber, Uber test. The Uber test is basically what we use in the, uh, you know, when you have a iliotibial spasm or you have a iliotibial band contracture. The only test which is performed in the lateral position. So as I was saying, <laughs> As I was saying, I was telling you that whenever they are asking you a test, you know, if you remember the gist of the test without even remembering the specific steps and the inclusions of that test, if you see an image and if that answer clicks you, you're done with your job. Because in the exam, nobody is going to judge you for knowing the steps or not knowing the steps. Okay, so you just need to see an image and that's all. Now, this is what you're looking at right now is called as Allen's test. So I'm sure you all will agree that you have radial artery here. You all will agree that you have ulnar artery here. I'm sure you all will agree. I'm sure you all will agree that you have a superficial palmar arch here and then you have the palmar distal arteries. The examiner right now is compressing both the radial and ulnar artery with the two thumbs. I'm sure you can see that. Now, we'll ask the patient to immediately flex and extend the fingers. See, he's doing it again. Now, when you are doing it again, so that kind of creates a blanching of the skin. Can you all appreciate this blanching of the skin? I'm sure you all can appreciate this blanching of the skin. Now, you will see examiner removing a thumb from the other artery, technically removing the pressure from one of the artery, and you will see this blanching will become red. Why? Because of the collateral flow. See, the collateral has flown. Now, when it is becoming red, so that means one channel is patent, another artery is patent. Now, the examiner will again flex and extend, flex and extend, flex and extend. So, again, you will observe a blanching. Okay? Again, you will observe a blanching and now he will remove the pressure from the other side and you will see the blanching has become red. So, what does that mean? That means that ulnar artery channel is patent, radial artery channel is patent, superficial palmar arch is patent, palmar distal artery is patent, entire arch is patent. This test is, come on, speak up, this test is negative. Are we able to understand this? Now, we have to see two very important clinical tests as per, you know, the perspective of the knee joint. Now, when we talk about the knee joint, you have to understand that what they are performing here is called as the anterior drawer test. What they are performing here is called the anterior drawer test, which is for the ACL ligament. Okay. So, they are performing the anterior drawer test, which is basically for the anterior cruciate, <laughs> anterior cruciate ligament injury. So, a very simple test here. The examiner is sitting on the dorsum of the foot, knees flexed by 90 degree. He is holding the proximal tibia in such a way that two thumbs are under the tibial tibrosity while fingers are embracing the posterior part of the proximal leg and then the examiner will exert a draw anteriorly over tibia. That the examiner will exert a draw anteriorly over tibia with respect to femur. And if the tibia goes excess anteriorly, we say anterior drawer test is positive. Now, the problem is that in acute injuries, mm -hmm. anterior drawer test is not a very good option. So whenever we are dealing with a with a with a you know with an acute injury, so we perform latchment test and always remember that latchment test is test of choice. You know, it is the test of choice for acute ACL tear. It is the test of choice for acute ACL tear. All right. So it is the test of choice, as I said, for acute ACL tear. Now, in latchment test, how do you... No, no, no. Dr. Pratibha, ye wo nahi hai. Can complete partial and to complete that is for meniscus. That is for haplase bending test. You know, this is happens when you see a lot of jadu in your childhood. You tend to miss things and mess up a few things in adulthood. Anyways, uh, pun intended. So, latchman test is the test of choice for acute ACL tear. Why? Because for acute ACL tear, the amount of flexion is 30 degrees. In anterior drawer test, are we able to understand this? In anterior drawer test, what is the amount of flexion? In anterior drawer test, what is the amount of flexion at knee? 90 degree. And that is something which is not suggested for latchman test. Why? Because 90 degree flexion is too much of flexion. In acute tear, you need less flexion to have, you know, because see, acute ACL tear will have hemarthrosis. It will have a lot of bleeding. It will have a lot of swelling inside the knee. 
so knees are very yes the doctor uh, the another profile me yes, is absolutely right so knees in a very comfortable position so last point test is a test of choice so most comfortable position of knee joint 30 degree flexion at the at the same moment guys at the same moment i want to take this opportunity you know i want to take this opportunity to tell you all that most comfortable most comfortable position of hip you know most comfortable position of hip is flexion abduction external rotation for knee it is 30 degree flexion okay for knee it is 30 degree flexion okay it is 30 degree flexion and that is one hell of a reason i repeat my words again that is one hell of a reason why latch pen is considered to be the test of choice that is why you know latch pen is considered to be the test of choice because it is performed in the most comfortable position because it is performed in the most comfortable position moving over to the next slide now uh on the on the left hand side what you see is basically mcmurray test on the left hand side what you see is Mac, mcmurray test because that is a test of choice for uh, meniscal tear so the knee from hyperflexion they are taking into extension from hyperflexion they are taking into extension by keeping the foot into internal and external rotation on the right hand side is what you know that uh, dr pratibha i think was the name what was the name yeah so uh, dr pratibha was mentioning you know so this is on the right hand side what you see is apley's grinding test so this is basically what you see here you know this is basically what you see here is apley's grinding test so this is what you see here is called as apley's grinding test and this apley's grinding test believe me is not a very good test why it is not a good test as you know something somebody had already mentioned because it converts partial tear into complete tear now what you are looking at right now this is basically what is called as mcmurray test this is called as mcmurray test and both the tests are for meniscal tears both the tests are basically for meniscal tears all right so both the tests are basically for meniscal tear done everyone all right so moving one step further already labeled nothing to label so what do you think about this i'll tell you what do you think about this just take a look at the edges you know just take a look at this edge what anything you want to say about this edge it's a clear cut cutting edge it's a clear cut cutting edge it's a clear cut cutting edge did you see that so this is a typical bone cutter there should not be any confusion here for all of us you know there should not be any confusion here it's a clear cut bone cutter i mean it's a clear cut bone cutter mm -hmm. okay now what do you see bone nibbler now why do i see bone nibbler i say bone nibbler why because you see this can you see this these edges are hollow from within these edges pdf will be provided don't worry so the the sharp cutting edges bone cutter the edges which are hollow from within bone nibbler cutter and nibbler very important now this is a plate holding forceps guys this is a plate holding forceps why do i say it's a plate holding forceps because one side is serrated do you see that one side has got serrated margins other side has got smooth margins the serrated side will hold what serrated side will hold what the bone the smooth side will hold what the plate so this is basically the plate holding forceps now this is a bone holding forceps the line and the hay groves non-self-retaining self-retaining usually we use of course we use self-retaining okay so basically basically it is it has serrated margins on both the sides it has serrated margins on both the sides so i can see a few question kindly provide pdf it will be Kamal Rahman, how to get PDF, Bata dunga. how to identify bone nibbler. Nibbler has edges which are hollow from within. As far as the cutter is concerned, these are sharp cutting edges. This edge which is hollow from within. Okay. Roshni Varma. Kush Roshni Padi is aapko. Plate holding me, one side smooth, one side serrated. Smooth side will hold the plate, serrated side will hold the bone. Uh, bone holding, both sides serrated because both will hold the bone. I hope it makes some sense now. Now, can you tell me what is what? 
अगेन एनी बडी टेल मी वॉट इज देर ऑन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड बिल्कुल ठीक है रॉय बिल्कुल ठीक बोल रहा है क्रोकोडाइल हालांकि वो क्रोकोडाइल नहीं होता डक बिल्ड होता है बोन चौधरी साहब छीनी नहीं है छीनी नहीं है दिस इज नॉट छीनी ओके दिस इज नॉट छीनी आई मीन दिस इज नॉट ऑस्ट्रोटोम आई टेल यू वॉट इज दिस सो दिस इज बेसिकली पेरियोस्टल एलिवेटर सो दिस इज बेसिकली पेरियोस्टियल एलिवेटर राइट सो दिस इज टेक्निकली पेरियोस्टियल एलिवेटर एंड या सो दिस इज बेसिकली पेरोस्टल एलिवेटर एंड आई थिंक ये आएगा कभी ना कभी आएगा अभी ये गूज वूज नहीं है दिस इज पेरोस्टल एलिवेटर गूज हैज यू नो कैविटी होती है उसमें उसमें कौन के मार्जिन होता है इसमें ऐसा कुछ नहीं है दिस इज अ बेबल्ड मार्जिन चलिए कैन एनी बडी टेल मी वॉट इज दिस कैन एनी बडी टेल मी वॉट इज दिस सो दिस इज होमेंस बोन लिवर दिस इज होमेन बोन लिवर इट इज पर्टिकुलरली यूज फॉर बोन्स लाइक फीमर फीमर फ्रैक्चर पर्टिकुलरली यूज वेन यू हैव फीमर फ्रैक्चर सो एरियाज ऑफ डेप्थ यू नो टेक्निकली यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड इट लाइक दिस सो वेन यू आर ऑपरेटिंग इन एन एरिया ऑफ डेप्थ यू यूज होमेन बोन लिवर सो यू पुट इट इन साइड यू प्रेस इट डाउन एंड द यू नो विद लीवर यू वट इज द पर्पज ऑफ लीवर इन लाइफ यू डू नॉट गो टूवर्ड्स दैट थिंग यू टेक दैट थिंग टूवर्ड्स यू तो आप ऐसे समझ लो नाउ द नेक्स्ट थिंग दैट आई वॉन्ट यू टू अंडरस्टैंड हेयर इज कॉल्ड एज ब्रिस्टोज बोन लिवर सो दिस इज टेक्निकली ब्रिस्टोज बोन लिवर सो दिस इज ब्रिस्टोज बोन लिवर और राइट सो दिस इज टेक्निकली ब्रिस्टोज बोन लिवर इट इज अगेन अ बोन लिवर जस्ट लाइक होम एन बट इट इज यूज फॉर स्मॉलर बोन्स आर वी विल टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस इट इज यूज फॉर स्मॉलर बोन्स बड़ा अच्छा क्वेश्चन आया डॉक्टर खजोल ऋषि हाउ टू डिफ्रेंशिएट बिटवीन ऑस्ट्रोटोम एंड पेरोसल एलिवेटर यू हैव अ थम रेस्ट यू हैव अ थम रेस्ट दिस इज अ गुड क्वेश्चन सो लिसन टू मी एवरी वन इन ऑस्ट्रोटोम एंड लिवर देर इज अ वेरी वेरी बेसिक डिफरेंस लेट मी टेल यू वट दैट बेसिक डिफरेंस इज दैट बेसिक डिफरेंस इज दैट यू हैव अ थम रेस्ट कैन यू सी दिस can you see this you will never have this thumb rest finger rest isko aap kuch bhi bol sakte ho you know you call it a thumb rest you call it a finger rest you call it anything so what you are looking at right now this is classical of dr rishi i think i'm not hope my galat nahi le raha na ha dr rishi so dr rishi the question that you have asked is basically you can call it a finger rest or a thumb rest aapko jo bolna hai bol lo basically is pe you put your finger or your thumb and then you strip off the bone ठीक है यू पुट योर फिंगर और थम एंड देन यू गो लाइक दिस यू नो सो दिस इज बेसिकली फंडामेंटल हेयर ठीक है बस समझ में आ गया चले आगे सो दिस इज समथिंग विच आई वॉन्ट यू टू रिमेंबर नाउ वॉट इज दिस वी हैव डिस्कस दिस इन डी वी टी एज वेल आई होप यू रिमेंबर आई यूज अ पर्टिकुलर लाइन फॉर दिस आई यूज अ पर्टिकुलर लाइन फॉर दिस इफ यू पीपल रिमेंबर दैट इट कन्वर्ट्स Duryas into nazdikiyas. It converts destructive forces, shearing forces, into compressive forces. So this is technically tension band wiring. Uh, you can call it a gut feel. You can call it anything. I don't know, but I have a very strong feeling that ये आना चाहिए exam में ना मतलब बहुत हो गया यार. So tension band wiring, which is used for mainly used for fracture patella, and mainly used for fracture olecranon. so mainly used for fracture patella okay and fracture olecranon i feel that it should come in your exam the next thing that you should know is that it converts distraction forces into compressive forces it converts distraction forces into compressive forces it converts shearing forces into compressive forces that is the fundamental of doing a tension band wire okay done everyone chali moving over to the next slide now so on the left hand side what you can see is a classical ptb cast okay so on the left hand side what you see is a classical ptb cast if they ask you the full form which they will for sure so patella tendon bearing cast so it is patella tendon bearing cast and it is basically used for which fracture shaft of tibia 
ठीक है सो दिस इज समथिंग विच आई थिंक विल बी आस्ट बिकॉज इट हैज बीन आस्ट क्वाइट फ्यू टाइम्स बिफोर एज वेल सो दिस इज बेसिकली पटेलर टेंडन बियरिंग कास्ट पी टी बी कास्ट विच दे यूज इन फ्रैक्चर शाफ्ट ऑफ टिबिया नो गाइज हाउ टू आइडेंटिफाई इट स्टार्ट विद पटेला आर वी विल अंडरस्टैंड दिस इट स्टार्ट विद पटेला इट स्टार्ट विद पटेला एंड देन इट इन्वॉल्व टिबिया इट इन्वॉल्व लेग इट स्टार्ट विद पटेला और उसके बाद जो है वो टिबिया को इन्वॉल्व करता है वो लेग को इन्वॉल्व करता है तो आप इसको ऐसे समझ सकते हो ठीक है इट इन्वॉल्व पटेला इट इन्वॉल्व टिबिया इट इन्वॉल्व लेग एंड इट गोज अप टू द फुट नो दिस इज अ शॉर्ट लेग वेन आई से शॉर्ट लेग बिलो नी राइट हैंड साइड यू सी लॉन्ग लेग अब नी इन देंटर यू सी सिलेंडर कास्ट और ट्यूब कास्ट ये जो सेंटर में आपको दिखाई दे रहा है सो दिस इज टेक्निकली यू नो दिस इज टेक्निकली अ सिलेंडर कास्ट और अ ट्यूब कास्ट नो दिस सिलेंडर कास्ट और ट्यूब कास्ट दिस सिलेंडर कास्ट और ट्यूब कास्ट इज फॉर ओके सो दिस सिलेंडर कास्ट और ट्यूब कास्ट दिस सिलेंडर कास्ट और ट्यूब कास्ट इज फॉर फ्रैक्चर पटेला ठीक है सिलेंडर कास्ट और ट्यूब कास्ट इज बेसिकली फ्रैक्चर पटल इसकी पहचान क्या है सी हाउ टू आइडेंटिफाई इफ इट कम्स इन योर एग्जाम देन द इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग इज हाउ डू आइडेंटिफाई यू आइडेंटिफाइड इज अ वेरी सिंपल थिंग इट स्टार्ट्स जस्ट अब द मिडल ऑफ द था इट फिनिशेज जस्ट अब द मेल लाइ द एंकल एंड द फुट इज नॉट कवर्ड वेल द एंकल एंड फुट इज कवर्ड इन ऑल ऑफ दैम सी इन अदर एवरी सिंगल कास्ट एंकल एंड फुट आर कवर्ड चले जी what do you think okay first of all what do you think that you are looking at here you know what do you think you are looking at here so you are looking at racketic rosary theek hai ji so you are looking at here that is basically that is basically racketic rosary theek hai ji now what you are looking at here you are looking at metaphysical signs you are looking at metaphysical widening of rickets you are looking at metaphysical widening of rickets i'm sure you all will agree i'm sure you all will agree so you are looking at metaphysical widening of rickets now what are you looking at here you know what are you looking at here this is pot belly but apart from pot belly what is important is genovirus so what you are looking at right now is genovirus you know the knock knee okay so this is basically the genu oh, sorry the bow legs so you are looking at genovirus the bow legs now in the other image in the other image if you see then what you are looking at you are looking at genu valgus in the other image you are looking at the genu valgus now if you see the third image if you see the third image what do you think I'm sorry. So this is basically Gino Valgus. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is not Gino Valgus. This the third one is the Gino Valgus. This is wind swept deformity. Now when I say wind swept deformity, what does that mean? That Gino Valgus on one side, Gino Valgus on another side. But so when we have Gino Valgus on one side, Gino Valgus on another side. So here you have Gino Valgus. Here you have Gino Valgus. Now if you look at the third thing here, so that is technically Gino Valgus. <coughs> that is basically the genu valgus all right so if you are looking at the third thing here that is what is called as the genu valgus theek done this way that way they are going to ask this way that way they are going to ask you a question related to this so please be ready please get yourself prepared this is very important absolutely roy takrate hue ghutne टन करते हुए घुटने ओके सो नाउ वट आई वॉन्ट यू टू रिमेंबर इस आई वॉन्ट यू टू रिमेंबर अ वेरी सिंपल थिंग हेयर दिस प्लीज पे अटेंशन वट आई वॉन्ट यू टू रिमेंबर इस दैट मोस्ट कॉमन कॉजेस इन चिल्ड्रन ओके नाउ इफ दे आस्क यू ऑफ जीनो वायरस देन आई वुड से रिकेट्स इफ दे आस्क यू जीनो वैलगस then i would say idiopathic mera baat samajh aa raha hai if they ask you of wind swept deformity then i would say rickets then i would say rickets 
are we able to understand this then i would say answer is rickets are we able to understand this are we able to understand this now if i put up the whole thing guys if i put up the whole thing in adults mera baat samajh mein aa raha hai if i put up the whole thing in adults and if i say genu virus then answer has to be oi if i put up in genu valgus in adult answer has to be are if i talk about windswept deformity in adults answer has to be are does that make some sense now i hope that does make some sense now so when we so you have to label this believe me this is very very important and it has been asked quite a few times in exams ठीक है ये एग्जाम में ऐसा नहीं है कि कभी नहीं पूछा गया बहुत बार पूछा गया सो नॉर्मली दीज थिंग्स आर आस्ट डायरेक्टली और इनडायरेक्टली बट फॉर श्योर दे आर आस्ट ठीक है फॉर श्योर दे आर आस्ट एंड यू हैव टू बी वेरी केयरफुल अबाउट इट चलिए सो मूविंग अबाउट द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड नाउ ओके सो मैलेट फिंगर अबाउट टू नो योर डिफॉर्मिटी स्वेन नेक आई मीन इट्स ऑलरेडी लेबल्ड इफ यू कैन सी दैट ग्रेट आई कैन शूट टू यू so in mallet finger you have dip inflection mere baat samajh mein aa in swan neck you have dip inflection but pip in hyper extension are we able to understand this in swan neck you have dip inflection but pip in hyper extension reverse in bottom neck you have dip in extension and pip inflection so in mallet finger you have only dip inflection so technically three deformities we have discussed does it make some sense everyone everyone does it make some sense to all of you clear hai ye koi confusion to nahi hai now when we talk about the meniscus blood supply I always remember that it is from outside to inside the meniscal blood supply so one needs to remember here is that meniscal blood supply meniscal blood supply is is from outside to inside meniscal blood supply is from outside to inside you know it is from outside to inside so that is the fundamental behind meniscal blood supply that is the fundamental behind meniscal blood supply mishra ji bilkul theek hai aap aise kar lijiye koi issue nahi hai theek hai वंस अगेन प्लीज अच्छा चलो इसको मैं मैं आपको सिंप्लीफाई करके बताता हूँ बहुत लोग ये पूछ रहे हैं मैं इसको सिंप्लीफाई करके बताता हूँ इधर देखो एवरीवन प्लीज पे अटेंशन इधर देखो इधर देखो ये देखो सो इफ ओनली डीआईपी इज इन फ्लेक्शन ठीक है ओनली डीआईपी इज इन फ्लेक्शन तो बोलेंगे मैलर फिंगर ठीक इफ डी इज इन फ्लेक्शन बट पी इज इन हाइपर एक्सटेंशन PIP is in hyper extension. इस वगैरह के लिए खाते हैं. DIP is in flexion, mallet finger. If DIP is in flexion, but PIP is in hyper extension. You know, PIP is in hyper extension. इसको hyper extend करके इसको ऐसे कर लिया. ठीक है? Then that is what is called a swan neck. Swan neck. Swan neck. Swan neck. Neck तो ऐसे होती है ना? So if this is in flexion, this is in hyper extension. We call it swan neck. But if this is in hyper extension and this one is in flexion, so इसको flex करके let's hyper extend it. Then this is what is called as bow to knee ear deformity. अभी समझ में Roy, is this clear now? Roy, is this clear to you now? So I hope it makes some sense to you. I hope आपको समझ आया हो. Now इधर क्या मेरा presentation ये रहा. So this is the fundamental here. I hope it is clear to you. Roy sir, chalo. Now moving over to the Popeye the sailor man. So this is a clear cut Popeye sign. Nothing I need to mention here. ठीक है ना? Nothing I need to mention here. It's a biceps tendon rupture. The image is showing you the long head of biceps because it is actually the long head of biceps which is usually ruptured. And uh, when the long head of biceps is ruptured. the entire muscle belly the entire muscle flesh you know it accumulates at one place at one area and gives rise to this particular thing so that is what is called as you know popeye the sailor man popeye sign now we come to another i mean you all will vouch for it mera baat samajh aa raha hai you all will vouch for it bolo aap i'm sure you must have seen pyqs ha na have you ever seen any goddamn entrance exam without a question on splints for orthopedics no 
certain things are inevitable. If at all you feel lost, you feel um, that, you know, maybe your preparation is not going to meet the end which you wanted it to be. You know, the, the end which I wanted to my preparation, probably I'm not able to achieve it. So that's okay. That's okay. But at that same time, if you are getting confused, if your mind is getting fogged, so mind, mind fogging, at least there are a few things which are inevitable. Out of them, splints is one. So let's quickly revise the splints. So knuckle bender splint for ulnar palsy claw hand. How do you identify? How do you identify? You all can see how do you identify? You identify with the help of, you know, covered metacarpals. Cock up splint, radial nerve palsy. How do you identify? Very simple. <laughs> metacarpals are free. If metacarpals are covered, knuckle bender, ulnar nerve palsy. If the metacarpals are free, cock up splint, radial nerve palsy. The next one that you are going to see here is basically uh, AFO, the ankle foot orthosis, which is basically for the CPN palsy, the common peroneal nerve palsy, which is what we use in foot drop. I hope makes some sense. Are these three splints clear? So if the metacarpals are covered, knuckle bender, if they are free, hock up. If there is something which is holding the foot in its place, AFO, ankle, foot, orthosis, foot drop. Time for a question to all, uh, you know, hundreds of students connected with me right now. <laughs> Bully, what do you think is the spine? You have discussed this with radiology, you have discussed this in, uh, you know, in orthopedics. But yes, so this is what you're looking at right now. So this is what you are looking at right now is what is called as fish mouth spine. So this is called as the fish mouth spine or the cord fish spine or the biconcave vertebra or the biconcave vertebra. Okay, now where do we use this? I mean, where do you see this? This is something that you see in osteomalacia and osteoporosis for sure. But if you have to choose one, I mean, there should not be any confusion that you are going to choose osteomalacia. Unless and until, you know, unless and until, listen to me carefully, unless and until the question categorically mentions. Unless and until the question categorically mentions that it's a young female or it's an elderly female. So I get a lot of questions. Sir, they have given a question of this fish mouse on an x-ray in a 60-year-old patient and they're asking me, Sir, I'm out of Malaysia because you told us it is more commonly seen in Malaysia. I said, dude, at least look at the age. If it is 60, it can't be Malaysia. Malaysia is in young women. Process is in old women. Out of the two, I will have obviously choose young women. I mean, I will choose Australia. But if they have categorically given me the age, then I have to follow the age. Are we able to understand this? Are we able to understand this? Chali. So now, now what I want you to remember here is, I want you to remember a very simple thing here, that if they ask you fish mouth spine, or okay, what next can happen is, what next can happen is, they can ask you rugger jersey spine. Okay, what next can happen is, they can ask you picture frame spine. Okay, what next can happen is, they can ask you bamboo spine. What next can happen is, they can ask you flowing candle wax spine. Okay. Now, fish mouth spine, as I said, osteomalacia more than osteoporosis. Okay. You remember? Okay. You remember this? Osteomalacia more than osteoporosis. Rugger jersey spine. Tell me. What do you think about rugger jersey spine? Yes, rugger jersey spine is something which you see in ROD, but as well as you see in, bolo, as well as you see in osteopetrosis. So, renal osteodystrophy osteopetrosis okay osteopetrosis so if you if you remember if you if you have to choose between the two r for regular c r for rod m for mouth see m for mouth m for malaysia m for mouth m for malaysia r for regular jersey r for regular jersey mind you r for rod okay r for regular jersey r for rod are we able to understand this picture frame spine Paget's disease. Paget's disease of bone. Now, very simple. P for picture frame. You know, P for picture frame. P for, P for picture frame 
पी फॉर पेजेट्स ठीक है पी फॉर पिक्चर फ्रेम पी फॉर पेजेट्स बैम्बू स्पाइन एंग स्पॉन्ड वेरी सिंपल एंगल लूजिंग स्पॉन्डलाइटिस फ्लोइंग कैंडल बैक स्पाइन यू सी इन डिश वेन आई से डिश वट इज दैट मीन डिफ्यूज ईडियोपैथिक डिफ्यूज ईडियोपैथिक स्केलेटल हाइपर ऑस्टोसिस ऑल्सो वट इज कॉल्ड एज बोलिए ऑल्सो वट इज कॉल्ड एज फॉरेस्टियर्स डिजीज ऑल्सो वट इज कॉल्ड एज फॉरेस्टियर्स डिजीज आर बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस सो दिस इज अ टेबल एट द एंड ऑफ द डे फ्यू पीपल हैव बीन लकी I mean, I will not say you know all people. Few people have been lucky that in one entrance exam, two questions from this table came. One was given by orthopedics, one was given by radiology. So, आते तो दोनों आते नहीं आते तो दोनों में लग गए. So you have to be very careful. This is interesting and this is important. ठीक है? Done, everyone. चलिए. So moving over to the next slide now. What are you looking at right now, dude? You are looking at the central bone. Just take a look. The central bone, radio dense bone, ischemic bone, necrotic bone, unhealthy bone, non-viable bone, non-vital bone. Most importantly, the dead bone, the dead bone, because this bone has been eaten up by Staphylococcus aureus in a disease process called as osteomyelitis, called as osteomyelitis. Those intelligent people who are answering acute osteomyelitis. Acute osteomyelitis does not have sequestrum. It does not have involucrum. It does not have cloaca. It is seen in chronic osteomyelitis. Again, a silly mistake. The moment you look at it and you start seeing acute osteomyelitis, no sequestrum and volucrum cloaca are a feature of chronic osteomyelitis. So this central radio dense ischemic necrotic and healthy non-viable non-vital piece of bone is what is called as sequestrum. It is surrounded in periphery by the image is already labeled, so I'm not writing anything. The 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 bone is surrounded in periphery by reactive immature superficial healthy new bone. What is that called? In volucrum, who makes it? Periosteum, periosteal reaction. Because you know that love and life of a bone is called periosteum, and if you do anything to the bone. Periosteal takes revenge. That periosteal revenge, in the language of orthopedics and radiology, is what is called as periosteal reaction, and then it makes some reactive bone all around the dead bone, and that is called involucrum. But that involucrum has got certain holes. I'm sure you all can see the hole. I'm sure you all can see the hole here. So that involucrum has got a hole, and that hole is called as cloaca in singular and cloaca in plural, which I want you to understand. So this whole slide is representing what chronic osteomyelitis. this whole slide is representing what chronic osteomyelitis does that make sense now moving further i want you to remember two mcqs the clinical hallmark of chronic osteomyelitis bolie bada bada the clinical hallmark of chronic osteomyelitis yes anybody the clinical hallmark of chronic osteomyelitis the clinical hallmark of chronic osteomyelitis sinus the pathological hallmark of chronic osteomyelitis sequestrum the pathological hallmark of chronic osteomyelitis sequestrum the clinical hallmark of chronic osteomyelitis so that is basically sinus okay so that is basically sinus we need to understand this moving to our next slide can you all tell me what is this fracture that we are looking at right now <laughs> can you all tell me what is this fracture that we are looking at right now okay first of all is this a fracture around the wrist joint yes is this a fracture of the distal end of the radius yes now do you think that there is a break or a breach in the distal radial articular surface guys please be very attentive please i repeat please be very attentive many of you you know you people put up these questions that sir isme how can you see the break or how can you see the breach so i am going to show you the breach today this is what you are looking at right now you know this is what you are looking at right now is the break or the breach now just tell me can you all see the break or the breach yes so does that break or a breach in the distal radial articular surface gives an impression that you are dealing with a fracture of the distal end of the radius which is extending into the articular surface making it intra articular yes or no yes yes or no yes apart from that you know apart from that you have to understand apart from that you have to understand that you are dealing with what apart from that you have to understand that you are dealing with what dude you are dealing with this fragment here you are dealing with this fragment see i have put a small circle in the fragment radial sclerosis you are dealing with a fragment called radial sclerosis 
then this is which bone skip for it this is which bone radius so radius of joint anatomy is absolutely intact so what do you think are we dealing with what do you think are we dealing with we are dealing with chauffeur's fracture we are dealing with chauffeur's or backfire or hutchinson's primarily chauffeur's fracture and believe me one of the most frequently asked question most of the times you should be very careful about chauffeur's fracture so just by looking at this arrow you can identify that it's a fracture of the distal end of the radius intraarticular fracture distal end of the radius with radial silhouette bony fragment done now look at the other fracture of course it is a fracture of the distal end of the radius but do you see it is it is going into the articular surface here it is going into the articular surface bilkul ja it is going into the articular surface but do you see scaphoid here let me just okay let me just show you scaphoid so i'll use another circle here so this is basically scaphoid just take a look so this is basically scaphoid this circled bone i put a circle here this is scaphoid do you think radius and scaphoid have something in common no radius scaphoid joint anatomy is absolutely dislocated so this is an intraarticular fracture i repeat this is an intraarticular fracture of distal end of the radius going into the distal radial articular surface with radius with radius scaphoid joint subluxation with radio scaphoid joint with radio scaphoid joint subluxation so this is what we call as you know this is what we call as barton's fracture theek okay, hai so this is what we call as barton's fracture so fracture of the distal end going into the this thing done everyone a very very common question even a couple of days before the exam i get this query on social media sir i'm able, not able to differentiate between a bone nibbler and bone cutter i'm not able to differentiate between a barton and a chauffeur so here it goes moving over to the next point here so what do you think about this fracture on the right hand side can you see an x-ray here can you see an x-ray here so you have a fracture here of course it is in the distal end of the radius but basically i want you to understand disha thank you so much i'm so happy your confusion got cleared because ye ek eternal confusion hai everlasting confusion hai written confusion hai sabko hota hai so you can see the normal distal end of the radius can you see that can you see the normal distal end of the radius so you definitely have a fracture of the uh, distal end of the radius but that is not extending into the distal radial articular surface it is away from the distal radial articular surface see it is away now you know that whenever there is a fracture there are two fragment one is proximal one is distal and the displacement is decided according to moment and direction of what distal fragment so where is the distal fragment going come on tell me in this x ray on the right hand side where do you see you know where do you see the distal fragment going will you where do you see the distal fragment going kahan jara distal fragment distal fragment is going anteriorly are we able to understand this distal fragment is going anteriorly it is going volarly so the distal fragment i can show you here so this is the distal fragment which is going anteriorly which is going volarly so this fracture on the right hand side is basically this fracture on the right hand side is basically smith fracture yes absolutely so this is basically smith fracture or reverse colies fracture so this is basically smith fracture or reverse colies fracture theek okay? hai so this fracture what you are looking at right now you know this fracture what you are looking at right now is basically smith fracture or reverse colies fracture i'm sure you can see dinner fork deformity isme kahin koi confusion nahi hai dinner fork dinner fork dinner fork okay dinner fork dinner fork dinner fork and this is all about colies fracture so there is nothing much for me to explain here except for this but now time for a question but now time for a question the question is very simple that when we talk about colies fracture my first question is who gave colies fracture who is the colies behind colies fracture abraham colies what is the most common complication can you tell me finger stiffness no it is not malunion it is finger stiffness second most common complication is malunion which gives rise to dinner fork deformity which gives rise to dinner fork deformity and then in the treatment you give colies cast which is basically hand shake cast in the treatment you give colies cast also what is called as hand shake cast okay so in the treatment you give colies cast and that is what is called as the hand shake cast all right done everyone chaliye moving over to the next slide please 
steps in Kohli's caste reduction. So now we will have to explain you all what are the various steps in Kohli's caste reduction. Please pay attention everyone. So I want you to focus here. See guys, you have to understand one thing very clearly here that if somebody comes to you with Kohli's fracture, what are the possibility? One, the fragment will be impacted. Okay. Do you remember the displacements? I'll tell you what the displacements the mnemonic to remember the displacements is DILS, D-I-L-S. D, dorsal, I, impaction, L, lateral, S, supination. So first of all, the fragments are impacted. So the first thing you have to do is you have to apply traction and you have to apply counter traction to disimpact. First thing is traction to disimpact after traction to disimpact see you have a dorsal displacement so to tackle the dorsal displacement you have to do what palmar flexion because if you will do dorsiflexion the dorsal displacement will increase so the dorsally displaced fragment has to be put down by taking the wrist into palmar flexion now you have a dill is lateral displacement lateral means towards this side so you have to you cannot take this this side you have to take it this side and this is what is called as see this is what is called as ulnar deviation so first of all traction counter traction then few degrees of palmar flexion few degrees of ulnar deviation can you see that and then of course pronation why because you have to deal with what supination are we able to understand this are we able to understand this so first of all traction counter traction then few degrees of palmar flexion few degrees of ulnar deviation few degrees of pronation that's all so again i repeat it for you i repeat it for you just take a look okay i'll use this hand first of all first of all traction counter traction then palmar flexion then ulnar deviation then pronation how are you handshake cast so this is again something which gained popularity in last few years as an MCQ, nobody ever asked about it. So first step is always traction. Okay, traction and counter traction rather I would mention. Traction and counter traction to disimpact. Someone may agree. Traction, counter traction to disimpact. Then you have to do a few degrees of palmar flexion. Then you have to do a few degrees of ulnar deviation. Then you have to pronate. Then you have to pronate. So basically, this is the sequence. Now, <clears throat> can you all identify this fracture? Yes, anybody? Can you all identify this fracture here? Okay, first of all, you can see humerus, you can see radius, you can see ulna. Okay, radius dikha, ulna dikha, sab dikha boss. Now, first of all, you can see a fracture of proximal one third of ulnar shaft. So, there is a fracture of proximal one third of ulnar shaft. Okay, so you have a fracture of proximal one third of ulnar shaft. Okay, so you have a fracture of Okay, hold on. You have a f hold on. You have a fracture of proximal one third of ulnar shaft, and I'm sure you all can see that fracture very clearly. You can see that fracture very very clearly here. fracture hai proximal one third of ulnar shaft ka. Anybody any confusion? Okay, thank you so much, Deepika ji. Now, you can see the anterior dislocation of the radial head. See, radial head was supposed to be here. Radial head jo hai, wo tha? It, it, it was supposed to be here. It was supposed to be here. Well articulating with the capital. But there is some problem. What is that problem? Let me tell you what is that problem. There is anterior dislocation of the radial head. So, there is anterior dislocation of radial head. Alright. So, there is anterior dislocation of the radial head. So, what do you think? What are we dealing with? So guys, we're dealing with which fracture? We're dealing with which fracture? So we are dealing with Montegia's fracture. We are dealing with, okay. So we are dealing with, we are dealing with Montegia's fracture. So fracture of proximal one third of ulnar shaft with radial dislocation. Aditya sahi hai, Deepika sahi hai, Chaudhary ji sahi hai, sabhi sahi hai. So Montegia fracture. Now you can see a fracture where? Here, 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 where, 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 here, here, here. I can show you. So you can see the fracture here. So it is, is it a fracture of the ulna? No, it's a fracture of the radius. Which part of the radius by the way? Radial shaft. Which part of the radial shaft? Middle one third, distal one third. 
there's a fracture of the radial shaft at the junction of middle one third and distal one third and plus then uh, i would say i would certainly say that you know you can you all can see you know you all can see something I'll, I'll tell you what you all can see you all can see this you know you all can see this there is some problem in the druj did you see that there is some bloody problem in the druj for sure ab man lo man lo mere baat aisa hai so what you are looking at right now is galeazi fracture what you are looking at right now is galeazi's fracture which is fracture of middle which is fracture of junction of middle and distal one third of shaft of radius with druj dislocation okay with druj dislocation so this is Galeazi's fracture. I think we can move on to the next slide now. ठीक है जी. चलिए. So what do you think? Somebody is assaulting you uh, at 1 a.m. and blowing a stick on you in your defense. You do this. And when you do this, a stick comes to you and pa. But stick is coming to you in the night. रात का डंडा. So stick is coming to you in the night. So what you are looking at right now is night stick fracture. which is technically isolated fracture of shaft of all all right so which is technically an isolated fracture of shaft of ulna all right so this is an isolated fracture of shaft of ulna and what we call it as night stick fracture so whenever you are protecting yourself in the defense you can have this let's take a look at the next one Of course, it's a fracture of the humerus bone. ठीक है. Doctor Guru is uh, quite aware and quite experienced. निकिता, yes. So, कुछ students बहुत experienced लग रहे हैं इसको देखके. No, this is not. Aditya, this is not XX Lopresti. Piyush is absolutely right. It's not uh, Holman. It is Holston. आय है है. Dev Shukla wrong. Choti wrong. अब्दुल कलाम कह सकते हो सोम रॉन्ग स्टार गेजर रॉन्ग दिशा रॉन्ग प्रतिभा रॉन्ग डॉक्टर लालसा रॉन्ग मुझे पता था यही होगा आई न्यू इट आई न्यू इट अब सब सही हो रहे हैं रोहन सही है शुक्ला जी सही है अब सब सही है मिया तो अभी भी रॉन्ग है हॉलस्टेड हॉलस्टेड मनोवर नहीं है दिस इज होलस्टेड लुई एवरीबडी लुक्स एट इट एंड लाइक सर सुपरा कंडल अब सुपरा कंडल नहीं है दिस इज Holston Louis supra condylar would have been hair this is junction of the shaft of humerus at the junction of upper two third and lower one third ki nahi so technically what i want you to understand is see please try to understand it's a very very simple thing you have to just look at it like this that there is a junction of upper two third and lower one third of shaft of humerus so this is upper two third of the humerus this is lower one third of the shaft of humerus it is exactly at the junction ठीक है ना इट इज एग्जैक्टली उप्स इट इज एग्जैक्टली एट द जंक्शन सो इट इज एग्जैक्टली एट द जंक्शन दिस इज होल्स्टन लुवे फ्रैक्चर ओके सो इट इज अ फ्रैक्चर एट जंक्शन ऑफ अपर टू थर्ड एंड लोअर वन थर्ड ऑफ shaft of humerus but this will not be called holston louis unless and until it has a component of dev shukla is absolutely right it has to have a component of radial nerve palsy without the component of radial nerve palsy believe me you cannot call it to be what you are calling it right now you cannot call it holston louis kab tak jab tak tab tak it is not having any radial nerve palsy bole ko kya acha radial nerve palsy wala ha पढ़ा तो था नोट्स पे था कहीं लिखा तो था अंडरलाइन भी किया था मार्कर भी चलाया था चलो कोई बात नहीं आता है नहीं सो प्लीज ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस इज होल्स्टन लुई फ्रैक्चर आदित्य यू हैव टू बी वेरी केयरफुल नाउ दिस इज अ डाई पंच फ्रैक्चर सो इट्स अ फ्रैक्चर ऑफ द डिस्टल रेडियस दिस इज केफोर्ड बोन दिस इज लुनेट सो दिस इज लुनेट फोसा what has been fractured is lunate fossa and the, and the, and the fracture clearly shows as if some, somebody has just punched into it somebody has just punched into it so this is what we call as you know this is what we call as okay so this is what we 
called as die punch fracture which is basically fracture of lunate fossa of distal end radius which is actually fracture of you know which is actually uh, fracture of okay so which is actually fracture of just hold on so which is actually fracture of lunate fossa of distal end of radius so this is basically die punch fracture for all of us done lunate nahi hai lunate ka fracture nahi hai lunate is intact it is a lunate fossa of distal end of radius now what do you think about this yes anybody anybody what do you think about this see first of all it's a fracture of the first metacarpal no confusion at all okay it is a clear cut fracture of the first metacarpal now this is trapezium this is first metacarpal so this fracture line is extending into trapezium first metacarpal joint yes or no yes does that make it intraarticular fracture of the base of the first metacarpal extending into joint yes you can look at the right side again fracture again first metacarpal again base again extending into joint again making it intraarticular no confusion at all so both the fractures have few things in common that both are at the first metacarpal yes at the base yes extending into joint yes intraarticular yes then what is the difference सवाल ही पैदा होता है क्वेश्चन ही पैदा होता है द क्वेश्चन अराइजेस सॉरी द क्वेश्चन अराइजेस देन व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस लेट मी जस्ट टेल यू द डिफरेंस सो दिस फ्रैक्चर इज ओब्लिक सो दिस फ्रैक्चर इज एन ओब्लिक फ्रैक्चर आई एम श्योर यू ऑल कैन सी दैट आई एम श्योर यू ऑल कैन सी दैट दैट दिस फ्रैक्चर इज एन ओब्लिक फ्रैक्चर ऑल राइट सो फ्रैक्चर दैट यू आर लुकिंग एट राइट नाउ इज बेसिकली एन ओब्लिक फ्रैक्चर ऑल राइट सो दिस फ्रैक्चर दैट यू कैन see you know this fracture that you can see here is basically oblique see this fracture is basically an oblique fracture are we able to understand this so this fracture is basically an oblique fracture done this is an oblique fracture now if you see on the opposite side if you see on the opposite side it's a v shaped comminuted fracture mera baat samajh mein aaya ki nahi it's a v shaped so technically it is a v shaped comminuted fracture it's a v shaped comminuted fracture theek hai na it's a v shaped comminuted fracture what you are looking at right now so technically i would say you know technically i would say that this fracture is bennett fracture okay so this is basically bennett fracture theek hai ji koi confusion isme and this fracture if you see on the opposite side you know this fracture that you see on the opposite side this is basically rolando fracture all right so this fracture that you see on the opposite side is basically rolando fracture so is bennett and rolando clear to all of you yes most of you got it right now moving over to the next fracture avulsion fracture of the tip of the spinous process of c7 bolo boss what do you have to say about this fracture so this is a clear cut clay shoveler fracture so it's a clear cut clay shoveler fracture avulsion fracture of the tip of the spinous process of c7 you know c7 so that is basically clay shoveler you know that is clay shoveler fracture done everyone done chali so now moving over to the next slide what do you have to say about this h shaped sacral fracture so this h shaped sacral fracture what we are looking at here is basically jumpers fracture so this is jumpers fracture which is an h shaped sacral fracture so it's an h shaped ka sacral fracture and of course it is seen due to fall from height in most of the case is so it is jumper fracture done chali moving on to the next slide so this is lovers fracture all right so this is lovers fracture or also called as don juan fracture so lovers fracture also called as don juan fracture so it's a intra articular fracture 
it's an intra articular fracture of calcaneum okay intra articular fracture of calcaneum usually due to fall from height again that is something which one should know you know again something which one should know so intra articular fracture of calcaneum which occurs usually due to fall from height and usually bilateral <laughs> dr dc delhi knows everything huh? sir how to jumper fracture i don't know your question but question the reason why but look at this shape this is an h shape okay so right buttock right, right ground reaction force left buttock left ground reaction force they go up they meet in the middle and this is jumpers fracture done chali few one liners that we all need to know most common site of non union always remember it is the fracture of distal one third of tibia i mean there should not be any confusion at any point of time because see you have to understand one thing here that distal one third tibia is not surrounded by anything bas hon mein kuch nahi hai wahan pe there is no muscle musculature or anything it is just skin and the bone so agar bone cut jata there are hardly any soft tissues to support the fracture theek hai now there are many causes of non union but the most common cause will always remain most common cause will always remain inadequate immobilization now many people think that you know non union will happen whenever there is an inadequate reduction or there is an inadequate uh, fixation or blah blah or blah blah or blah blah just remember one thing that if immobilization is not done properly there can be a problem now this entire thing is very important first radiological sign of union is basically callus and that is basically soft callus are we able to understand this are we able to understand this so first radiological sign of union is soft callus and uh, you know basically it is occurring at third week and first clinical sign which happens after it so mind you radiological precedes clinical union i want you to remember this you know i want you to remember this that radiological union precedes clinical union you see soft callus callus at third week you see hard callus woman born at usually four to six weeks So radiological union precedes clinical union, as I said. Are we able to understand this? Are we able to understand this? ठीक है जी, चलिए. Which is the most metabolically active layer in a long bone, and that is usually endosteum. Which is the first long bone to start ossifying? Although you know it starts at fifth week intrauterine life. Answer is clavicle. Which is the second bone to ossify by intramembranous ossification after clavicle? That is mandible. ठीक है. So these are few facts which one should know. Okay, Doctor Amir Nazir ne pucha hai. You know, uh, Amir Nazir ne pucha hai. What is woman bone? so basically when we talk about the steps of fracture healing the first step is hematoma formation theek hai jab bhi hum baat karte hain fracture healing ke steps ki to jo first step hota hai that is always hematoma formation followed by inflammation followed by the third step soft callus followed by the fourth step hard callus that hard callus is basically woven bone which is formed by endocondyl ossification are you able to understand this dr nazir woven bone is that intertwined bone which is formed as a result of hard callus formation and clinically when we see woven bone we say ki chalo theek hai the fracture has united dr chaudhary has given a correct explanation no 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 not correct explanation something was going on third floor between blah blah and blah blah parents no no no, no. spouse of the lover kid so there was a lover male lover female lover of course okay and then female lover spouse came and the male lover had no other option he had to jump from the third floor and he got this fracture because uh, he landed on the ground on his floor see doctor uh, uh, some some person has corrected it person has corrected it yes uh, dr ratna shilana if you want to know that uh, you we use two angles in uh, this uh, somebody has uh, you know mentioned something so let's talk about that so we use two angles in fracture calcaneum one is bohler angle which is always decreased and we used giesen's angle in which you know the bohler angle uh, the in fracture calcaneum the giesen angle is increased so do remember this this is really important all right so this is important done everyone chali how can we see woven bone clinically by doing a 
test where you try to move the two fragments and if you are and if you are not able to move the fragments at all there is no frank abnormal mobility dr amir nazir ne bada acha question puch hai you try to move the two fragments together you hold the fracture site and if you feel that the fracture is clinically sticky enough that there is no ab mob there is no abnormal mobility between the two fracture ends then there is when we say clinically that you know we have the bone bone we have the fracture union we have the clinical union dean चलिए सो मूविंग ओवर टू द नेक्स्ट वन सो मोस्ट पेन सेंसिटिव स्ट्रक्चर इन अ जॉइंट कैप्सूल आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू सो मेनी टाइम्स दैट मैक्सिमम सप्लाई ऑफ नर्व फाइबर इज विद कैप्सूल लीस्ट पेन सेंसिटिव स्ट्रक्चर इन अ जॉइंट इज ऑलवेज आर्टिकुलर कार्टिलेज बिकॉज दिस इज वन लेयर यू नो दिस इज वन लेयर विच इज नो ब्लड सप्लाई ऑफ इट्स ओन नो नर्व सप्लाई ऑफ इट्स ओन नो लिप फैटिक सप्लाई ऑफ इट्स ओन इन फैक्ट इट इज नॉट इवन कंटेन पेरिकॉन्ड्रियम ऑफ इट्स ओन सो देर फोर इट हेज नो रिजनेटिव कैपेसिटी And revise, revise quickly. Uh, first year MBBS anatomy, bidi chorasya zero volume. Remember zero volume? It's a small book which everybody ignores. So few points about articular cartilage: avascular, aneural, alimphatic, devoid of pericondrium, no regenerative capacity. Again, no blood supply, no nerve supply, no lymphatic supply of its own, no pericondrium, no regenerative capacity. Articular cartilage is the primary layer involved in two diseases in orthopedics: one, septic arthritis; two, osteoarthritis. Okay, last few slides. What do you think? Can you see a bony stalk? Can you see a cartilaginous cap? Can you see distal femur? Can you see growth plate? Can you see skeletal immature? Can you see growth of a bone outside the bone? <laughs> Can you see all that? Can you see a bony stalk? Can you see a cartilaginous cap? I repeat, karo. Can you see a bony stalk? Can you see a cartilaginous cap? Can you see skeletal immature person? Can you see distal femur metaphysis growth of the bone growing away from the bone in the direction opposite to the joint? So technically, we are dealing with what? We are dealing with osteochondroma or exostosis so we are dealing with osteochondroma also what is called as exostosis all right so we are dealing with osteochondroma or exostosis so far so good usually they are solitary rarely they are multiple now in this osteochondroma you are just you know you are supposed to remember something very peculiar here you know something very peculiar that this you know this is basically a central radio lucent lesion nidus can you see that can you see that everyone i have already told you so many times i have already told you so many times that you know any bone that looks more black on an x ray is called lucentia lysis we have discussed that few times we have discussed so what you are looking at right now mm-hmm. you know what you are looking at right now is a central lucent lesion also called as nidus the properties of which are that diameter is less than 2 cm and another property is that very high content you know very rich in prostaglandin content and that prostaglandin content is the reason for you know that is the reason for night pain you know that is the reason for night pain mera baat samajh mein aa raha hai kya so this is the central lucency diameter less than 2 rich in prostaglandin and that is primarily the reason for night pain now now if you see the periphery you know if you see the periphery then you would be able to tell me theek hai na if you see the periphery then you would be able to tell me what i'm talking about is bolo usme kya kya bologe aap if you see the periphery then you would be able to see the sclerosis the peripheral sclerosis can you see that can you see that the peripheral sclerosis that is basically osteoma so what you are looking at right now see what you are looking at right now is osteoid what you are looking at right now is osteoid and if you see in the periphery the thick peripheral sclerotic rim mera baat samajh aa raha hai if you see in the periphery this thick sclerotic peripheral rim you know this thick peripheral sclerotic rim you know this is what is called as osteoma so technically i want all of you to understand that in the center you have osteoid which is surrounded in periphery by osteoma so you have a thick you have a thick peripheral reactive sclerotic rim called osteoma all right so you have a thick peripheral reactive sclerotic rim and that is what you call as osteoma so technically you have osteoid surrounded in periphery by osteoma
Yeah, I was steward, surrounded in periphery by was tumor. Done everyone. And because of the prostaglandin, there's a lot of pain in the night and that night pain responds fantastically to aspirin. Treatment of osteochondroma is wait and watch. Most of the cases, they regress on their own. If they don't, then we operate only when they're symptomatic. Chalye. So you can see a classical x-ray sign here. Okay, so you all can see. Just tell me. Yeah. Tell me. Really. So you are looking at a sun ray or a sunburst appearance here because that is the periosteal reaction along Sharpie's fiber. So we know that there is something called cortex. Above the cortex, there is a love and life called periosteum. And between the cortex and periosteum, you have fibers which are called Sharpie's fiber. And if you see periosteal reaction along Sharpie's fiber, if you see periosteal reaction along Sharpie's fibers, that is what is called as sun ray or sunburst appearance. All right, so that is what is called as sun ray or sunburst appearance, which is the periosteal reaction along Sharpie's fiber. So this is basically that sun ray or sunburst appearance. Take it here. What you see here is what is called as Codman strangle, which is basically a periosteal elevation. This is not periosteal reaction. It is just a periosteal elevation. So Codman strangle develops due to periosteal elevation. So, Codman's triangle will basically develop due to periosteal elevation. Done, everyone? Chali. So, moving over to another question that keeps popping up in my Instagram, in my social media accounts, uh, difference between SBC, ABC and GCD. So, first of all, I want all of you to tell me, this is something which you all must have read so many times in radiology. Can you tell me about it? Can you tell me about it? Okay. And then can you tell me about it? Batao. Iske mein bata sakte ho. Can you tell me about it? What is this? Okay. First of all, the one on the left hand side. Falling leaf sign. Falling fragment sign. It represents pathological fracture in simple bone cyst. So this is a falling leaf sign or a Falling fragment sign. Okay, which represents pathological fracture in SBC. Which represents pathological fracture in simple bone cyst. Alright, so it represents basically pathological fracture in simple bone cyst. I'm sure you all can see. Proximal humerus, metaphysis, tick. Classical. Now, what you can see here is, let me just tell you, what you can see here is something which is epiphyseal, metaphyseal. Okay, you can see something which is eccentric. You can see something which is expensile. You can see something which has axial crackling. You can see distal femur. Okay. You can see another beautiful thing, so bubble appearance. I'm sure you all will agree with me that there is a well defined geographical lytic lesion. Dekabne, XL sign. It's a clear cut, you know, it's a clear cut GCT. It's a clear cut GCT, also what is called as osteoclastoma. So it's a GCT, also what is called as osteoclastoma. Dekabne. Now, if you see here, you know, SBC is also called as unicameral bone cyst. Dr. Epsita, you are right. It is called simple bone cyst. It is called solitary bone cyst. Lick the tome here. Simple bone cyst, solitary bone cyst, unicameral bone cyst. Okay, simple bone cyst, solitary bone cyst, 
unicameral bone cyst and this is gct osteoclastoma now what you can see here is what you can see here is basically the abc so what you can see here is abc something which is far more aggressive something which is <clears throat> far more aggressive okay so more aggressive more expensive okay and then you see multiple blood filled sinusoids with septa in between but 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 i'm just telling you a but now dekho boss sabse important baat main ab aapko batane ja raha hu skeletally mature the most important thing is skeletally mature most important thing is metaphyseal involvement theek hai if you see the growth plate you know if you see the growth plate then answer has to be answer has to be abc matlab isme koi confusion hi nahi hai the answer has to be abc there is no confusion at all okay in that scenario there cannot be any confusion there just cannot be any confusion in that case are we able to understand this done yes gct distal end of femur abc proximal tibia so here skeletal maturity that means age more than 20 matlab agar x ray mein ya clinical condition mein if they are talking about a skeletally mature person baat kar raha hu it is gct done the eternal confusion of sbc gct and abc chali osteoarthritis uh what is the most common joint by the way chali bataiye what is the most common joint involved knee in oa of knee bataiye most common bone yes anybody anybody patella most common muscle i'm writing the short form here vm vastus medialis obliquus most common compartment medial all right so most common compartment is medial all right so these are few one liners that one should know now what is the first x ray sign it is clear cut asymmetrical reduction of the joint space in which please try to remember that medial nerving occurs earlier in more than lateral nerving because it is the actual medial compartment which is the weight bearing compartment now these bony spur i'm not labeling it because it's already labeled uh, and uh, you can call it a gut feel you can call it intuition i don't know what but mere ko se bahut zyada ummeed hai aaye exam mein so this is something what you are looking at right now is an osteophyte this white white thing what you are looking at right now is sclerosis this 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 thing is cyst formation okay so this is a clear cut osteoarthritis so yeah aayega ye exam mein zarur aayega ye zarur aayega chaliye moving to the few one liners again so most common joint knee bone patella muscle vmo symptom pain deformity genuinum baucard herberton node pip and dip you know pip and dip always remember this when i was preparing like you i remembered it like this bphd blood pressure heart disease blood pressure heart disease bp baucard pip okay you have to remember it like this okay you have to remember it like this b and p so blood pressure hd heart disease so h is this and d is this okay are we able to understand this so you have to remember it like this chaliye ji so you can see the baucard node and the herberton node you can see it for yourself so guys with this we come towards the end of discussion of a uh, few very very important orthopedic uh, topics and orthopedic questions here the purpose was just to tell you a few things which i have of course told but basically main aapko fir se ek cheez bolna cha raha hu ki at this moment it is very 
obvious you know it is very very obvious to feel low it is very obvious to feel monotonous it is very obvious to feel you know something is not uh, fitting in and jigsaw puzzle mein hota na ki kuch fit nahi ho rahi hai cheeze you will make a lot of plans and aap unhe faad doge fir naye banaoge please don't do that because ye jo bhi aap kuch aisa jo bhi karoge na that will be another waste of time the most important thing right now is डोंट सीक वैलिडेशन फ्रॉम अदर्स कि जो मैं कर रहा हूँ सही कर रहा हूँ गलत तो नहीं हो रहा है जो होना था वो हो चुका है यहाँ से आगे जितना समय हमारे पास बचा वी आर स्टैंडिंग ऑन आई थिंक ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट ऑफ फेबर है ना फिफ्थ ऑफ मार्च है तो वी हैव सेवन डेज एंड प्लस वी हैव फोर डेज तो टेक्निकली इलेवन डेज एवरेज टेन आवर्स अ डे इलेवन डेज टेन आवर्स अ डे हंड्रेड एंड टेन आवर्स लेट्स टेक हंड्रेड आवर्स हंड्रेड आवर्स ट्वेंटी सब्जेक्ट्स टेक्निकली वन सब्जेक्ट फाइव आवर्स can you revise medicine in 5 hours no pathology in 5 hours no physiology in 5 hours no that was the reason why dams took this initiative in even in the last 10 days you know normally you must have seen in our past also we never do this kind of a revision session in the end but since we were getting a lot of queries that most of the students who had made notes whatever you know the sources have been but wo kehte ki revise nahi ho raha because you know you should buy totally what you can chew but probably people have bitten too much and they were not able to compile they were not able to concise meri baat samajh mein aa rahi to cheez ko mukammal anjaam tak pahunchane ke liye uska khatma hona zaruri hai lekin wo ho nahi pa raha so that is why we came up the solution of you know revising on telegram and youtube um i have given you deliberately 15 minutes because i'm aware that from 9 pm it will be uh, dr surya Uh, microbiology on telegram so i want you to focus on that you have 10 15 minutes uh, you can take a short bite meal water go to the loo but please don't miss that session uh, it's very very important yes. before i leave i just want you to believe in yourself believe in your preparation don't go for any fomo that i'm missing this and he's doing that she's doing that koi jo kar raha hai use karne do जैसे पढ़ते आए वैसे पढ़ते चलो डो नॉट चेंज योर स्ट्रैटेजी डो नॉट चेंज योर यू नो स्लीप टाइमिंग्स प्रॉबेबली सम ऑफ यू माइट बी अवेक टिल अबाउट फोर इन द मॉर्निंग फाइव इन द मॉर्निंग और स्लीपिंग यू नो इन द अर्ली मॉर्निंग आवर्स एंड स्टार्टिंग मोर इन द नाइट सो अभी चेंज करने की कोई जरूरत नहीं है वट एवर यू आर गोइंग टू डू इज पोस्ट सेकेंड ऑफ मार्च और थर्ड ऑफ मार्च अभी डो नॉट चेंज योर स्टडी पैटर्न एट ऑल थिंक ऑफ द गुड थिंग्स इट इज वेरी कॉमन टू गो टू बेड एट let's say if you are sleeping at 2 am it is very common to go to the bed at 12 midnight or maybe 1 maybe 1:30 and then not been able to sleep till about 2:30 आपने सोचा है मैं दो बजे सो जाऊंगा एंड आई पुट अप एन अलार्म ऑफ लेट से एट थर्टी आई स्लीप फॉर सिक्स एंड हाफ आवर्स आई विक अप एट एट थर्टी एट स्टार्ट स्टडिंग अगेन आप दो बजे सोना चाहते हो चार बजे नींद नहीं आ रही है क्यों नहीं आ रही है सोचो क्योंकि दिमाग में कुछ चल रहा है क्या चल रहा है एक ही चीज चल रही है होगा नहीं होगा नहीं होगा तो क्या होगा उसका होगा मेरा नहीं होगा तो हमारा क्या होगा सो अ लॉट ऑफ थॉट्स आर गोइंग ऑन इन योर हेड प्लीज ट्राई टू कंट्रोल देम आई नो इट इज इजियर सेट एंड डन बट स्टिल यू हैव टू डू इट बिफोर स्लीपिंग ट्राई टू यू नो गो फॉर अ ब्रिस्क वॉक थोड़ा घर घर में चल लो आसपास चल लो ट्राई टू सोने से पहले ना थोड़ा फटीक लेके आओ सो दैट यू नो इफ यू आर अ लिटिल टायर्ड देन बिकॉज मेंटल फटीक डज नॉट लेट यू स्लीप इट इज अ फिजिकल फटीक तो थोड़ा वॉक करने से फायदा होगा थोड़ा कुछ लोगों से बात करने से फायदा होगा यू नो टॉक टू यू लव प्रोडक्टिव प्रोडक्टिव पीपल एट दिस मोमेंट हु आर नॉट देयर टू जज यू हु नॉट देयर टू गाइड यू हु आर जस्ट देयर टू लिसन टू यू ठीक है सो एंड थिंक ऑफ द गुड थिंग्स जस्ट यू नो द मोमेंट यू लीव योर बुक्स एंड एवरी थिंग डो नॉट सी योर मोबाइल एंड कि वो क्या कर रहा है उसने आंसर दिया कि नहीं दिया उसने यूट्यूब लाइव पर दिया उसने टेलीग्राम पर दिया उसने क्या डाउट पूछा है डाउट तो मुझे पता भी नहीं था कि डाउट मत करो ये सब कुछ उस वक्त पर सिंपल एक चीज सोचो कि सिक्स ऑफ मार्च को क्या होगा एवरी सिंगल नाइट वेन यू आर अबाउट टू स्लीप द मोमेंट यू पुट डाउन योर पेन योर बुक्स एंड योर मोबाइल जस्ट थिंक ऑफ वन थिंग सिक्स ऑफ मार्च को क्या होगा कहाँ जाऊंगा क्या करूंगा कैसे करूंगा क्या एंजॉय पार्टी ट्रैवल हॉलीडे फैमिली वेडिंग वॉट एवर इज पेंडिंग आई फिनिश इट सिक्स ऑफ मार्च ऑनवर्ड्स because that will give you a kind of a happiness that will give you a kind of a light at the end of the tunnel dosto agar aapki zindagi mein 5 march aayega na yakeen rakhna 6 march bhi aayega aap 5 march ke bare mein soch soch ke neend kharab karoge pareshan ho jaoge soge nahi aap 6 march ke bare mein soch lo aapko neend aa jayegi so stay hopeful stay optimistic i wish you all the best god bless thank you so much good night